Hey, hi, hey Sarah. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. How's your job going? Yeah, not too bad. How about yourself? Yeah. Did you hear about that session on facilitating the Wessex course psychiatry course? I did, yeah. I thought it sounded really, really interesting, but I'm just so busy at the moment. I don't know whether or not I could be able to fit it in. Well, there's no way I think I can do it. I mean, this is no time. We're jumping through so many hoops already. I see there's some more facilitator training for the Wessex course psychiatry course coming mm. up. They must have had a rush of people interested. Yeah, you know, I spoke to my educational supervisor about it and rang the module lead because mm. I was really quite interested but quite worried about the time commitment and she assured me that actually it's not a long-term commitment and you can just do one session at a time. Mm. So do you yeah. think you're going to have the time to go along with that? I know, I know I probably won't be able to. Well, I, I figured it wasn't actually that much of a big deal after speaking to her. I mean, it's um, two hours in the afternoon and then a fortnight later, just three hours in the morning. And it mm. sounds really quite manageable. Mm. Um, so I'm going to be going along with it and see what it's like. OK. Well, I hope it goes well and let me know how it goes on. The course is overseen by the Core Psychiatry Course Steering Group. It comprises of the course director, module leads, trainee representatives and the postgraduate centre. It is split into two parts. Part A, which runs for one year for the CT1 trainees and is a single integrated psychiatry module. And part B, which runs over two years for the CT2 and 3 trainees and is split into seven speciality modules, each with its own module lead. Part A, the integrated psychiatry module, has up to 10 different topics. This is facilitated by clinicians from adult mental health older persons mental health and CAMS. Generally two facilitators from these disciplines will run each of the sessions. Trainees are allocated to learning sets for the year and are expected to link their learning with their clinical practice in discussions with their educational supervisor. Part B has seven speciality modules each with its own module lead and each of the modules have a range of topics facilitated by the topic lead and another clinician. Trainees are allocated to four learning sets over the two years and again are expected to link their learning with their clinical practice and in discussions with their educational supervisor. The facilitators for the cognitive impairment topic are meeting just before the afternoon session is due to start. Um, I'm Dr Go for it. Hello, I'm Dr Hogg, very pleased to meet Hi, you. Nice to meet you. Um, thanks a lot for coming along today. It's just quite hard to explain what we're doing. Yes. It's much easier if you come along and then you can see where we're all at really and how it all fits together. And have you been keeping track of the email conversations we've been having with each other? Yeah, no, I've, um, thanks for copying me and I've, I've, I've been reading them. But I'm still a little bit confused about what my role would be and, and what it is that I'm supposed to, be, supposed to be doing. Well, I mean, I can't say that I was sure what I was letting myself in for when I was first asked to do this. But I've been doing it for a couple of years now and, and I must say I really enjoy it. Mm. I think that when you're asked to give a presentation, you know what you're letting yourself in for. Um, but what worried me about this was what if, for example, I was asked a question that I didn't really know the answer for. Um, I mean, really, I'm only a, a trainee who's a couple of years ahead of this lot. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit concerned. I mean, I think that's true for all of us. It, it's the same for me, really. We've changed the course a little bit as we've gone along. And, for example, I haven't done any adult psychiatry for a very long time so it's quite hard for me to, to go back and do bits like that but it's, it's about the experience that we bring I think. The thing is we all bring different levels of experience as facilitators and, um, and obviously Shelley leads it but we all bring mm. something to it and we can exchange emails and um, just put it together on the day really. And I feel it's my role as the lead facilitator to pull the topic together, really. So I start off by fielding the ideas by email, then we can all have a dialogue about that. By the time we get to this point, we should have a clear plan, really, as to what we're hoping to achieve in the session in, once we go in the room. And also, as, as one of the core facilitators and lead facilitators, I have an overview of the course, so I know if something hasn't quite been covered. So, ex for example, I know we didn't really cover pseudo-dementia in the depression topic, so we need to make sure we bring some of that into the cognitive impairment topic mm -hmm. today. I'm still a little bit muddled between the topic, between sort of topics and tasks. Um, well, aren't we all? And the first year, I don't think any of us could really get it straight, mm. but it is becoming a bit clearer um, year on year. 
The, there was a huge confusion between all of us. So we, we set on the terminology of a topic being the two week, the title of the two week session really, mm -hmm. and the tasks or the jobs we ask each group to complete as part of those, that individual topic. And there is, there is some sort of overlap between different tasks on occasions. And we asked the students to come back on the second week really and do a presentation. And the presentation can be a variety of things ranging from PowerPoint to role play. We really don't mind as long as they get their message across. Mm -hmm. Shall we go on through into the room? Great, thank you. Hello everyone, I think you all know me by now. I'm Dr Shelley Hogg and I'm a consultant in old age psychiatry in Petersfield. I'd just like to introduce this afternoon's facilitator. So we've got Dr Sina, who's the co-facilitator for this topic. And we've got Dr Go For It, who is a trainee who's interested in becoming a facilitator. So she's here to try and suss out how the course works. This afternoon's topic is cognitive impairment, and I think you all know the routine by now. So what we're going to need you to do is to get into groups, and we'll be giving you three tasks and getting you to choose which task you want to do as a group. Before we start the cognitive impairment task, we have got, as usual, a master class, which hopefully is going to be a taster session about cognitive impairment. The master class we're doing is on younger onset dementia, which is quite a complex topic in itself. So we don't expect you to be experts at the end of it, just to get an idea of how it works. So you've seen the four tasks that we've allocated for today. One of those tasks will be left clearly because there's three groups and it's up to you to have some responsibility and make sure you can cover that task for yourself in relation to work and the exam. So we've got roughly 45, 50 minutes working in your groups to come up with a plan as to how you're going to cover the task as a group. Myself and the other facilitators will be mingling, giving you guidance, advice, help, anything you need as we go through that task. Hi Emma. Hi. Hi, it's nice to meet you again. So what are you doing in terms of your um, course psychiatry topic at the moment? Okay, so at the moment we're doing uh, dementia and we're looking at the NICE guidance for dementia and then my task focuses um, specifically on Alzheimer's disease. Oh right, okay. So what would be useful then is if we link in with some of the clinical staff, like mm. Mr J on the ward at the moment, you know, the 70-year-old oh, yeah. guy, yeah. Who, the one with Alzheimer's, we could um, look at uh, interacting the two there. Yeah, I, I thought about that actually and I thought because we could, um, I'm supposed to be looking a bit at Aricept and mm -hmm. I thought, you know, we've started him on Aricept and actually according to the guidance, perhaps in terms of his sort of cognitive assessment, he doesn't quite fit the criteria and we yeah. could look at yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I think that's going to be really important to do because although we have the nice guidance, mm. there are lots of times that we use variability in that. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Just to say welcome back, and I hope you've managed to do some work over the past two weeks in your group. So just to remind you of the format of the morning. So we've got the whole morning, but the first hour you're going to be working in your groups, trying to tie up the loose ends, the things you need to clarify for the task you're about to present to the, to the group as a whole. And can I just draw your attention to the slide here? As you know, we always encourage you not to feel you have to do a PowerPoint presentation, but if that's how you feel it's best to tackle the topic, then can you just make sure that you try and stick to the three slides? So we've got roughly half an hour per, per group to present their task. And 20 minutes or so, probably you presenting in 10 minutes for discussion. If something's really interesting, we've got a good discussion going, we've got some flexibility, but we will be keeping an eye on the clock to make sure that we've got everything to finish on time. So for the next hour or so, we're going to be mingling amongst you and making sure everything's sorted, and then we'll come back at the end of that hour, and that leaves us a couple of hours to do the presentations. I think... You know, guidelines are a good place to start, aren't they? I mean, they don't, obviously, they're, they don't always mean that we have to follow those sort of steps, but it's certainly a good place to start. So has anyone had a look yet at, at any of the guidelines, or could we bring some of those up, perhaps? Yeah, the next slide I say for the vascular dementia, we can't use this child collapse trace. Okay, so that would be a, perhaps a, a starting point for some of the discussion. Um, mm -hmm. Does anyone know any of the sort of types of... Uh, drugs that, that we use, any of the names of any of the, the medications that, that we've talked about? 
Should we, should we have a look at maybe we could get some books? And I think it's important as well is to think about how this all relates to people you've seen. So most of you should have done some old age psychiatry by now. So it's good to try and relate the guidelines perhaps to somebody you've seen on the board yeah. and, and do things like you know, stepwise progression or what the guidelines say. Is that actually what you're seeing in clinical practice? I think that's probably a good place to start looking as well. Yeah. But you need to have a clear message to give back to the group about what you think vascular dementia is. Okay, has everybody just about got to a point where they feel able to present something to the rest of us? So we've got everything tied up, so we may as well just start in logical order and start with group one. So perhaps if the facilitator who's going to do the presentation from group one could come out and just tell us how you found vascular dementia. Hello everyone. So our group's topic was vascular dementia and we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the clinical features of vascular dementia and then a little bit about how it's treated and managed. Um, so vascular dementia is the, most, um, the second most common form of dementia, accounting for about 20 to 30% of cases. Um, the, first, uh, the first cause of course being uh, Alzheimer's dementia, which is the most common. And in Alzheimer's dementia um, is a more progressive, steady decline um, in cognitive function. And the key clinical features are... Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing about what you've got to tell us about vascular dementia. But um, the next group has been given the task of talking about Alzheimer's dementia. So if it's all right, I think it would be good if we could leave them some bits to talk about. Okay. Um, and perhaps at the end of the session, we could have a discussion about maybe some of the similarities that you found between Alzheimer's dementia and, and vascular dementia, all the differences. Would that be okay? Yeah, that, that's fine. So, uh, fine. So uh, back on the topic. So, um, back to vascular dementia. So, it's described classically as a, a stepwise progression. Um, characteristically, uh, people maybe have a stroke or a TIA and, and, there's a, and there's a drop in functioning and then a... Okay, thank you very much. That was a good, succinct presentation. And we've managed to cover a few points during the discussions just to sort of highlight some of the issues that sort of make it slightly different from some of the other forms of dementia. And we'll come back to that later on. What does everybody else think? Does anybody else have any more comments they wanted to make? Well, thank you ever so much. That was really interesting. And I've got a really good idea now about how all the facilitators work together and how important that planning was right at the very beginning. And it was really good to have an opportunity to talk to the trainees. They seem to really value the, the enthusiasm and interest of the facilitators and it sort of rubs off on them. Um, and they also said they really liked the way in which the topics being discussed were linked in with, the, with um, their own clinical experience and the exam questions are sort of slotted all around it. That seemed to work really well. Um, and I like the way in which you sort of interrupted when the, when the speaker went off on, a, on, off on a tangent that you brought it back to what the topic being discussed and because no one wants to sort of listen to irrelevant sort of dreary presentations so it was really good that you could do that and, okay. and bring the topic back. Well what we do now is we just try and have a sort of wash up session ourselves really so we're just trying to figure out what we think worked well what didn't work quite so well. Mm -hmm. We get all the feedback forms from the trainees at the end of the session so we can, I can put together our comments and their comments and we can shape things a little bit for next year if we need to. Okay. So just before we get on to how we felt it went, just wondered you know, what your final reflections are as to whether you would like to become a facilitator or how you would view that really. Well yeah, I can see why you suggested that I come along and, and see what happens because it makes a lot more sense to me now um, and it's nowhere near as scary as I thought it was going to be I must say um, and absolutely I think I'd be really interested in being a facilitator but only for the one session because I've got a huge amount of dictation to do at all times. I think one of the main roles of the facilitators is to, to help, as you say, translate that knowledge, that, you know, what they're doing in clinical practice to how that fits in with the exam, to how that fits in with the textbook. So I think that really on the whole they seem to have got the grasp of the topics and...